What's up, guys? Welcome back to the March into March. We are finishing up conference tournament week. We got the SEC, arguably the best conference in college basketball. I don't think it is, uh, but you could argue that. <laughs> and we also uh, have a couple of, uh, you know, A10, American, you know, just, just a couple random picks here and there just to round things up for conference tournament week. Uh, the SEC is in a pretty typical year. You got your usual, uh, I would say the top four seeds would probably be your preseason pick for the top four seeds, maybe. You had Arkansas, uh, who has who had a terrible year. We'll talk about Arkansas here in a little bit. Um, I, you know, I, I don't see a lot of, of flair here. I think if you really want to pick a long shot, there's one that we probably both have in mind, and there's someone in the middle of the pack that I kind of like. But I think we're on a Kentucky and Tennessee crash course again. But this tournament's been surprising before, so, I, you know, you never know. I think a Kentucky-Tennessee rematch, or I guess a third rematch, would be awesome for the sport and just for entertainment. Um, I think, well, here's what, was, here's what was interesting. I looked at the bracket and immediately like I circle Kentucky because you think this is, this is Calipari. This is Kentucky. They take it seriously. They're good in this every year. Like the, you have to take Kentucky. I kind of didn't realize Ken, Kentucky's one in three in the SEC tournament since the COVID season. And their one win was Vanderbilt, I think by six, maybe two years ago. So since COVID, Kentucky has been horrible in this tournament, and I, I kind of just let that slip my mind. However, I do – you don't know what you're getting with this Kentucky team because of the the defense. I mean, they can't stop anybody, but they're going to win games 110 to 108, which is, you know, I guess that's how they roll. But if you look at Kentucky the last month, and, and they're, they're plus 400, by the way. They're the third best odds behind Tennessee and Auburn. The last month of this season, they're, they're a top 12, 13 team in the country, which isn't that surprising – they're one of the better three-point shooting teams in the country, and Reed Shepard's awesome. Rob Dillingham is awesome. They're seven and one in their last eight, and their only loss was kind of that weird loss at LSU on a on a random buzzer beater. Yeah, uh, they've they've gone on the road and beaten Auburn. They won at Mississippi State in a crazy game. Then they went to Kentucky, uh, to Tennessee and won that game. They're 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 playing well. It feels like this is the the Kentucky team we were promised, and. Plus 400, the two seed, they're going to play Texas A&M or Ole Miss. They lost to Texas A&M earlier in the year. I do just feel like this is a Kentucky team that's bound to turn it around and make the conference championship, which I think would be great for, for basketball watching purposes. But the last month of the season, they've been hot. They're playing really well. I like their players. They got the guards to do it. So Kentucky plus 400, I did take a little bite of that. Uh, it sounds like you're doing something similar. I think it's the right bet. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Um, I, I, th I think you're riding the hot hand here. This is a year that I think the tournament's kind of a in, in a weird wide open state. I can see Kentucky making a run this year. This feels like one of those weird years where they'll they'll uh, actually make some noise. Well, I, I can't really say that's a weird year. They do that pretty often, but you get what I'm saying. Um, I think there's some value there. That side of the bracket, uh, you know, it's just so tough with Tennessee. And until Tennessee runs into a team that's really going to get physical with Dalton Connect and die, that I hit the ball and and actually get up in his face, I think it's going to be hard to beat them. Um, it's, and, and I look at that side of the bracket. I mean, I don't think it's going to be South Carolina, Auburn, possibly. Uh, but speaking of that side of the bracket, I, I do have a long shot here. It's a team that I don't know why we have just refused to quit. Um, yeah, come on, it's our, our Arkansas's got to. They got to have a little something. Come on, I mean, it, it's just too good a value for the talent they have in a twelve seed. Well, I'll start with this too. The that that's the the top half of the bracket is the Tennessee side of the bracket. I would be stunned if Tennessee did not make the, the the conference championship and come out of that side of the bracket. And I wasn't going to play Tennessee because we're not into the business of playing the favorites at these bad prices, but I, I saw them at plus 210 and that felt really high. So I, I took a little bit of that at plus 210. Now they're plus 130. So clearly that was somebody messed up. I don't know. Plus 210 for Tennessee though. That feels right. But then you look at that, that four seed is Auburn. Auburn's kind of up and down. The 13 and 13 and five was our conference record, but I I ask of this: go look at Auburn's road wins this season. Go look at them away from home. We all know how good they are at home. They have a, an incredible home court advantage. They can beat you know anybody at home. But go look at them on the road. It's a completely different story. Their wins, I think UNC Asheville on a neutral court. They didn't even win their conference championship. They beat a, a mediocre at best Indiana team. Um, there was some other mid-major in there, and then they beat the five worst SEC teams. Those are their road wins. That's all it is. 
there's no going on the road beating Kentucky, Tennessee, Florida, any of these good teams. And in case you're not aware, the SEC tournament is not in Auburn Arena. I I I, I don't want to back this team outside of their home arena. And I think they're ripe for the picking. Now, could it be the five-seed South Carolina? I don't know because you can't sit here. It feels like you sit here this whole year and say, like, South Carolina's not actually that good. No, no, they're frauds. They they keep winning, but they're not actually that good. Like they they just keep winning. Like at some point they're good, but I feel like they're going to turn back into a pumpkin at some point. I mean, they're also they also would be lined up with Auburn next week. If you remember correctly, absolutely thrashed them uh, in Jordan in Jordan Harris. Yeah, uh, in, in yeah. Auburn. But <laughs> I'm so used to saying yeah. that. in Auburn, uh, they absolutely crushed them. Um, so you, you look at that lineup, and that gives you a little unease already about South Carolina. I think yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah, I, I feel like South Carolina, like South Carolina, it, both two things can be true. South Carolina is a good basketball team, and Lamont Paris has done a great job. They are also there to be beaten. They can be beaten. And Arkansas had high expectations before the year. I didn't think my one question with them was you bring in all these guys who are transfers who came from their previous schools where all they wanted to do was score, dribble the ball around, do their own thing. And now they're going to try to all gel together. I don't know if that's going to always work. And the results wouldn't show you this because they've had their losses recently, but they they have been playing better basketball. I mean, they just went to Alabama and really should have won, won probably. Yeah, they're playing better basketball. Musselman is still a good coach. They've got the guards to do it. Uh, Caleb Battle has been incredible uh, scoring the ball recently. Like, they're going to play South Carolina. They, they should be Vanderbilt. I know Vanderbilt beat them earlier, but they should be at Vanderbilt. They'll play South Carolina – I mean, they're more talented than South Carolina. I, I like Musselman better than Lamont Paris. They'll play Auburn. I think you're still kind of on a level playing field when it's not at it's Auburn. It's what, a three-point spread, a four-point spread? Yeah, it's point, going to be a close game, especially if at this point if Arkansas makes it there and they've won two in a row and they're building some momentum. And Arkansas is 250 to one in this tournament. We talk about all these long shots that we like in our Penn States and our Notre Dames. But 250 to one, I, I really feel like Arkansas can win two games. And make it to the quarterfinals, and I and I really do think like it is, it is possible for I think a Tennessee Arkansas semifinal. I really, really believe that. So I'm going to take a chance on Arkansas. And at that point, I've got a I've got a plus like twelve thousand ticket on Arkansas, and you know, and you're great. I mean, seriously, what five bucks is like fifteen hundred dollars? I mean, that's you're you're sitting at a great a great number. So um, I do like Arkansas there. I, I really think they can challenge and make a semifinal. They're not going to win the SEC. They're not going to be Tennessee. Um, I, I don't think, but I think it's, a, I think I do think it's a money-making opportunity. It's an absolutely a money-making opportunity. And then we both have, everyone's going to take the same team who every, ask anyone on the street who their sleeper is. And it's, it's everyone Florida. from Florida, right? Florida's the team. And I'm, I'm going to take them 20 to one. I think you're going to take them too. I, I like everything. I about them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like Mark Clayton Jr. He's a fantastic player. Uh, I think he goes as they go. If he has a bad scoring night, Florida's probably going to lose like when they lost to Vanderbilt, but I think that was kind of a fluke game. Um, I think they know what they have to do. You know, I, I don't, this is Todd Golden's, um, uh, best year. I think, I think last year, I don't, I don't think they made the tournament last year. Um, Colin Castleton got hurt. They didn't make it if I remember correctly, but I, I, I look at their side of the bracket. Okay. They're, they're probably going to get matched up with Missouri or Georgia and oh my God, please, please, please. Mike White do not lose to Missouri. <laughs> um, please. they, they're already two and oh against Georgia this year. Uh, and then they would play Alabama, who I think is we we talked about. I think they're pretty beatable this year. And then all of a sudden, you got them against Kentucky. You're at least in a hedge spot. I think that's a competitive game. Uh, once again, I like it as a money making. Florida played Kentucky basically to a draw over two matchups. They they won at Rupp uh, in overtime, and then they lost at home by two. I mean, they they evened out Kentucky really well. They did the same to Alabama. We just saw them drub Alabama last weekend. Um, and then the game that they went to Tuscaloosa was a game they led for like 35 minutes. And then I think they lost in overtime. It was a close game, but they've, they've played both of those teams really tight. Um, it, it's worth mentioning that they did play I mean, close games with Georgia. <laughs> Georgia took them to the wire. Both times. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. Um, but Florida, yeah. At 20 to one, I think is too good. This is a team. They also beat Auburn and looking at some of the metrics. I mean, the metrics like them since, since February 1st, they're a top 20 team in the country. They have good guards. You, you mentioned Clayton. Poland's been great. Their big men are great. Um, they defend the three-point shot really well, which is which is cool. And just looking since like just, uh, January 20th, right? J January 20th, they're 10-4. and four. Their four losses are they lost by one at Texas A&M. They had that overtime loss to Alabama. They lost by six at South Carolina. 
All three of those are good losses. The bad loss was this weekend losing to Vanderbilt by one, which you you can't do. I mean, you just can't do that. But um, I, I was kind of willing as it was happening. I was like, they're going to lose to Vanderbilt. Maybe people will. There, there was off. an iffy call at the end too. It's still no excuse yeah. to be in that close of a game with Vandy, but it, it's a, it's something you can excuse away a little bit. It wasn't like I didn't see a lot of red flags. It's no. a bad game. I'm going to choose not to worry about it. I'm going to push it out. I'm not gonna worry about it, but yeah, Florida twenty to one is definitely a bet. I think they, I think they will beat Alabama. Um, and if we're doing, if we're doing predictions, I'm gonna say Tennessee, Arkansas in the semifinals, and I'm gonna say Kentucky, Florida in the semis. And I think, mm-hmm. I think Kentucky beats Tennessee. Tennessee's damn good, but I think Kentucky, if they can get hot here like they have been the last month, that they can, they can win it, and they're gonna care. I mean, they're and they're gonna pack the place out with with their fans. So, I'll yeah. Take Kentucky. yeah. I'm in the exact same boat you are. That's the uh, same prediction. I'm going to go with Kentucky, um, taking the two seed instead of the one. Uh, it's not for my hate for Tennessee, but you know it is. Uh, it is that time of the year for Rick Barnes. So hopefully he shows up right on time. This is and this is the best team he's had in a while. I know he's had good teams, but this is like this, and this that's not a, like a hot take. They're the, uh, uh, going to be a one seed. I'm not not trying to ruffle any feathers, but like this is his best team. Like this is the one you you can't. You can't do this. You're in like a Matt Painter situation right now. You cannot, you cannot blow this. Uh, right, to, I mean, he's got Vescovi. He's been there forever. He he was there when Ben Simmons made his debut for LSU. Vescovi's, this is, it's Vescovi's last dance. So are you yeah. uh, any interested in Georgia 500 to one? Uh, okay. Are we playing one half uh, at Stegman? The first half at Stegman. That would be the, yeah, that would be the winning. The, the funny thing is actually, the funny thing is if you, if you hypothetically, if you said what is the best possible path for Georgia to try to, if they were to make a run, it, this would be it. It would yeah. literally be like I would, I would take Missouri in the first. I mean, if you can't get like an LSU or a uh, or a Mississippi State, you would take Florida because we almost yeah, you played a, you played a close game and we took Alabama to the wire. I mean, that's 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 the run right there. And then Tennessee, Tennessee, it took Tennessee to the wire. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm a. I'm not going to bet Georgia at all. I would highly recommend that. Um, but yeah, that should be it. Should be a great tournament. I'll, I'll take. I only took Tennessee because I found a, a better price than I was expecting. But I I do like Kentucky, Florida, and Arkansas. I think is good bets. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's where you're going to get the value. Um, I don't see any. I, I'm not anticipating any surprises this year, but especially Tennessee the style of basketball play. They kind of suffocate bad teams. So anybody on that side of the bracket, I'm not too I'm not too concerned with. And then uh, yeah. on this side, I just I, I like Florida, unfortunately, as much as it pains me to say. All right, let's talk some sleepers real quick. Um, I know you got some in the in the American, which I, I get so confused every time I look at the American now because I'm like, where's UCF? Because it, it changes. Yeah, it changes every year. They add and take away teams. Yeah, I think they added. I can't remember who they added to. They lost this SMU year. too. Charlotte? I think. Yeah, they they they've got. Um, it's actually been a sneaky good conference this year. It was all it was all the Florida Atlantic hype. South Florida came in with Abdur Rahim as their coach and did really really well and took the one seed. I think it's wide open. I was looking at your your South Florida is your one, Florida Atlantic's your two, Charlotte is your three, and UAB is your four. And I was trying to look for some value. The Charlotte is the three seed, and they do the they play this exactly like the SEC bracket. Charlotte is your three seed. They're fifteen to one, and their six seed that plays an extra game, SMU is I think plus 400 or 500, which is ridiculous pricing because uh, Charlotte played very well. SMU beat Charlotte in the first conference game of the season, but for SMU to play an extra game and be a huge a huge uh, odds over Charlotte like that just doesn't feel right. Um, Charlotte has a lot of transfers who came from high schools who have been in big games. I like the value on them as a three seed. And four of their five conference losses are, are really good. SMU, Memphis, and South Florida twice. Those are very excusable losses. And Florida Atlantic's up and down. They would play Florida Atlantic in the semifinal. I think it's uh, I think it's a good bet of 15-1. to 1. SMU's kind of coming in limping into the tournament. They haven't played well at all recently. So Charlotte of 15-1 to 1 is crazy because that, that's priced like they have to play four games in four days. Realistically, it's just mm-hmm. three. So I like Charlotte. And then I took a little stab on North Texas – uh, plus 850. They're the seven seed. They would play Tulane. I think they should be able to handle that. They would play Florida Atlantic in the second round, who they played uh, them really twice, uh, really good twice, both times. They just got outshot in the second game, but they can absolutely beat Florida Atlantic, a team that's been up and down. So North Texas is playing well. They were injured and they're getting healthy. So plus 850 for them as the seven seed. 
and then Charlotte 15 to one. So I had the American, which could be a sneaky fun conference, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm excited for this, uh, tomorrow. Well, by the time you're watching it, probably today, uh, getting kicked off. I'm super excited. Um, I, I might, uh, I might take a day off work one day this week and just walk down to uh sport and social, and, uh, have some beers and watch basketball. That's you have to. how man was meant to live. Don't, don't sleep on our long shots yet for those that laugh at the long shots. Cause I think Notre Dame is drubbing Georgia tech. UCF just won. Cincinnati's a huge favorite against West Virginia. We should be, we're sitting all right. And with these, some of these long shots. Yeah, Notre Dame. Uh, I, I put in Notre Dame this morning. I'm very interested to see how that goes. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, like I said, we'll be back. We'll be we'll be breaking down each quadrant. So uh, stick around because the march to march is not done just yet.